Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 40 minutes? And park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasas Bay. <laughs> yeah, it's a rainy day in the bay, by the way. Look at this. The rain's really coming down, and winter t tends to be a little bit rainy here in Pangasas Bay. We're in the heart of winter right now. Say, we're looking across the subject of today's build, and that's this space down right in here. It's kind of our river bottoms area. And uh, it's, got a, um, it's got a little oil field that sits down in this area here. And then this gap that's sitting right in here, if you recall, back when we built out Crystal Point, way, way back early in the uh, series, we had a rail yard depot in here. And then, you know, we learned that there was congestion that was really uh, clogging up the rail lines. So we relocated those rail lines back over here. Now, I've got this gap that's been sitting here, and it's been sitting there for a long, long time, and I just felt like this whole area still needs to be addressed. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be uh, we're going to doing a, kind of a light industrial build. We're going to put in some probably some big assets as well, but just kind of a hodgepodge, if you will, to fill the space up, create a transition that goes from the elegant Hickory Heights down to this rough and tumble Crystal Point down an area in here. Now, say... I did have a couple of viewers that reached out to me uh, over the last couple of weeks wanting to know, you know some of the vitals of the city. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us back into just regular camera mode here. You can see our population sits at about 73,000. Uh, we've got more money than we know what to do with. And I want to take you down to some of our demand meters here. Looks like we have a demand for commercial and for industrial at this point right now. And then let's just jump up here. You know, as you look across the city, you're not seeing a lot in the way of alerts. Yeah, you see the occasional waiting for a hearse and maybe some occasional high rent warnings here and there, but we don't have a problem with traffic. That's one of the questions that keeps coming up over and over again is, Sculptor, how do you keep from getting all the traffic issues in your city? And and one, I, I guess I'm just fortunate. Two, I've got things spread out really, uh, you know, really well spread out if you think about it. You know, you got that barrier island out there with, uh, you know, with some of our, our areas out here like Planners Park and Leggett's Curve and 10K Cove. And then you've got uh, you've got the downtown area here, which is not super dense. You know, that's one of the things I didn't want to do is make it super densely populated. I've got North Amundsen in here and there's lots of different, um, you know, there's lots of different public transportation options, right? You've got our big train station right down here in downtown that crosses over with our, our tram network as well and a bus network down in here. So, we, you know, the traffic moves pretty well throughout Pangasas Bay. It hasn't really been an issue. Uh, one of the things I did notice, though, as you go way back over here to Roughneck Isle, and you see that we've got a need for high skill labor. And so, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to have to do eventually here, let me just open up our tab here and education. You can see our college education is really, really low here in Pangasas Bay. And over the course of a couple of builds coming up, I'll drop in some additional colleges so we can kind of get that next level, if you will, of education right after high school. But all in all, I think things are going really, really well in the space. Uh, don't have a lot of catastrophic issues that we're dealing with. So, uh, yeah. And then another thing I wanted to do, a lot of people have been asking me when I'm going to be adding mods to this series. Now, my intent is not to add mods to this series, although I will say this. I do intend to add a couple of mods today just for uh, quality of life. Nothing fancy like Move It or, or anything like that. Really, one is just intended to, I think it's called Signature Fix, that will get our signature buildings to work properly. And the other one I was going to look at was the, uh, I guess, the uh, uh, the whiteness uh, disabler. I can't remember what it's called. But anyhow, we'll jump into the mods menu as soon as uh, as soon as we get the game going. All right. Well, I just threw a ton at you guys. And, and so I hope you guys are looking forward to this build as much as I am. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully this rain will push out of here pretty soon, too. <laughs> all right. Well, with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. Now you can see the two mods that I chose were one, Signature Fix. And what Signature Fix does is it actually makes the dairy house, the ground earth, and the oil finery work. That's an important thing. Those are three of the signature buildings that aren't currently working in the base game. And so this mod comes along and, and makes those work. So I appreciate that one. And then the other one was the whiteness toggle. I am not a big fan of all the whiteness that you get when you're trying to put down a building or an asset in the game. And this allows me to toggle that on and off 
and I'm really excited about that. So again, basic mods that are just really intended to make the game function as it should. So that's that's our brief little mods list. All right, so jumping back into the game, we have to do a couple of things. This is Ground Earth, and we need to knock that one down. Uh, whenever we activate those new mods, you have to come in and knock down the signature buildings. And I'm gonna come back over here to the other one that we have in place, and that is Dairy Barn. And I'm gonna go ahead and knock that down as well. Are you sure you wanna bulldoze it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then we're gonna come back into our signature buildings, go into the industrial signature buildings, grab the dairy house, and just go ahead and drop that back in there. And I think it'll populate in short order. We should have somebody move in pretty soon. But in the meantime, I wanna run back over. Now, as you recall, we just deleted Ground Earth, which came out of here. And I thought, let's relocate Ground Earth over into here, which is a little bit more appropriate, where we have all of our mining facilities. Remember, we built those out, oh gosh, a number of episodes ago. And let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take this, this fuel plant, I'm gonna slide that out of the way for the moment. And then I can come in with our signature building, which is Ground Earth, drop that into that space right here. Well, let's just put it in here for now. And I could put in some parking maybe, huh? Let's do that. Let's just, just grab a parking lot. So Ground Earth is now in place. So let's just jump back over to the dairy barn and see if anybody's moved in there yet. And they have. You can see here we have Drydemans. Drydemans uh, Dairy has moved into the dairy barn. And then given a little short period of time, the um, no doubt the Ground Earth will, will be occupied as well. So that's great news. We've got a good start there. And then, so the next thing I need to do is I need to come into this space and I want to I want to lay down kind of a road network for this whole area down in here. And I'm going to start by moving this firefighting helicopter, just uh, this depot right over into this space here. I've got these gravel roads that are marking off, if you recall, our oil field. There's a small oil field in here and I am going to build out some, uh, you know, some oil industry. It's just a small little oil industry back in this space here. And so we can take these roads out now, these, these little placeholders, so that we you know, now can start in building a real road network. And that real road network, I'm going to start with putting this road and having it, come, having it bend down and follow along the river and reattaching down here in the bottom somewhere. And then I'm going to separate this all out with a nice big road through here. Why don't you sit tight while I do that? There we go. Now we've got a nice little road network in place and that'll serve the kind of the area really well. We've got connectivity that makes its way along the river here. We've got obviously connectivity underneath the freeway here as well. And that gives us exposure to a freeway access on this side. And then also as you make your way down here, there's a freeway access over there. So we can really start to build out this space. I like it. Next, I should just grab this uh, firefighter helicopter depot and move that back into this space here. I might need to expand the space. It looks like it's a little closer to the water now. Yeah, let me just kind of nudge that out ever so slightly. Let's see if it'll fit now. And it does, it just fits into that space. I really like having that firefighting helicopter depot right along the river there. It's a short trip for the helicopters to jump down, fill their buckets and head off to the, uh, head off to the next fire. Now, uh, in this space here, I want to add something in that's going to be pretty big. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping it'll fit in here nicely. But it is a gas-fired power plant because I figured if we're going to have all of this um, gas production in this space, we should probably have a big gas uh, power plant to make, take a good advantage of that, of that fuel. So I'm just going to drop in a little roadway here. Let's see if we can get the power plant to fit into this space gas power plant yeah and it does it fits right into that little right into that little notch there right by the um right by the freeway and i'm going to use an alley road here to connect over here looks like this road needs a little connection there that's fine we can do that yeah and so that'll be you know obviously it's a huge uh, huge facility there that's along the freeway and i want to make sure that i share this with you guys as well so let's go into our area our little information tab here and let's grab air pollution you can see we've got a lot of heavy industry down in this space of course we had crystal point where we built out a lot of oil and uh you know stone and so forth and then of course we've got our big mining quarries back in here now this this gas power plant is going to emit a fair amount of, of air pollution but look at the way the wind is blowing it's again it's all blowing off the map and that was part of the, you know, the initial design concept when I was selecting this map was let's just be really mindful of which way the wind is blowing and continue to uh, 
you know, continue to, to take advantage of that and make sure that that's blowing off the map because, you know, your residents down here of, of Hickory Heights, the last thing they want is a bunch of, you know, foul, noxious fumes blowing up into their, into their lovely neighborhood. All right. Well, very good. So, so now we've got those two big assets in place and I think we can start to dive in and build out the next part. I, now, I can't recall, I don't think I mentioned it, but what I had in my mind here was let's build some some shops and stores down along here. Let's take a look down here at our at our demand bar. And if you look at our demand bar, we've got a pretty high demand for commercial and also for industrial. So that's going to be a focus of today's build is, is creating jobs for those two sectors. We don't have a really high demand for office at the moment. We might dot some of that in, but I thought let's put some commercial down in this space here so it's easily accessible by the residents of Hickory Heights. And then maybe also in this space up in here. In fact, who knows, maybe I'll put in some low rent uh, housing down in here. But uh, let's put in some commercial right down in this space. And then we can come down in here and put in some generic industry, maybe down here and then down in this space here and just kind of really play into what's been going on here in uh, Crystal Point as we made our way up to Hickory Heights. I'm gonna jump down along the road here and along the, uh, the, along the power lines, I'm sorry, and create a road and I wanna use the simple curve. Actually, it's the continuous curve. I'm gonna use an alleyway. And you can see the power lines down in here. I just kind of want to follow down along this po power line route. And now I can come in with a road that comes from here and makes its way down along and attaches to that. So I'll start with a two lane road. I'm going to turn off this snap to zone cell length and come right out of the middle of this one here. It's going to come straight out 90 degrees to start. And now I'll turn off all my snaps except for that right angle one. And I want to try and somewhat anyways, mirror what's going on in that road kind of up there by the river so just kind of bend this down here until it comes into a spot where it re-intersects with our little alley road back here and that will become the framework if you will for our little oil fields so we come into i'm sorry this uh industrial specialized industry and i select the oil and i'm going to come in here and just drop this one in eh, maybe if i turn off all the snaps and just kind of finagle it in there by hand, what is this gonna look like? Now, if we can just come in here and start adding all of our little nodes for our field, I'll paint that in, so sit tight. There we go, now we've got our first one in, and then I can drop in a couple more into this space. There we go. We've got all three of our little oil industries that are sitting in there right now. And, and I think it's uh, it's kind of a nice little look to it. It's a little different. I think it'll you know work really nicely in that space. So the next thing I want to do is I want to come down into this space here. And you yeah, remember, we've got that fuel plant that we had relocated up oh, here. It is right down here. Fuel plant that we'd relocated just to get out of the way of our ground earth installation. Let's check ground earth, by the way. Did somebody move in? Yeah. Onshore. Onshore. OK, yeah, good. And so I want to take that re that fuel plant and bring it up over here, up adjacent to this gas power plant. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in here, bulldoze these parking lots to start, just kind of take care of this stuff. And again, this is all left over from when we initially built out uh, Crystal Point. And, you know, it's just, it's gone through a transformation. We obviously moved that rail yard. And so I just uh, want to keep, um, you know, keep making sure that we're making improvements into this space. All right, so take out all of those extra trees there. In fact, I'll probably take these out here because uh, we're gonna tr drop that fuel plant in. And let's just, um, let's start by putting like a little, you know, little alley road that just kind of sits in between, you know, right next to that, uh, next to that gas power plant. Oh, let, let's actually, let's make some upgrades to that gas power plant. Let's do this, reduces the air pollution. I like that idea. Uh, advanced furnish, more efficient burn process. Well, yeah, why wouldn't we? And then uh, what's this other one? It allows for more fuel to be stored at the plant. Okay, we may, uh, oh, you can put them there. Well, that's interesting. Let's let's hold off on the net for right now though. Let's go grab that fuel plant and bring that over into here. Yeah, get it up close enough to this road here. Now, we're just, all, all we're gonna do at this point is just run this little road off the back here, trying to create a situation where I'm gonna be able to get that road, or I should say that that fuel plant right up against this, uh, this, this gas, what do you call it? Gas power plant. In fact, if I put it right there, 
Then this lines up at the end of the edge of that fence. Let's grab our little alley road. We'll run right up along so, and then come out to here and then work our way into there. And then we can cut this off. And uh, let's just see here. Would that line up to there? Probably not, but it's worth taking a look. Yeah, see if I go into that at 180 degrees coming off of here. And now we've got this whole fuel a fuel plant that looks like it's part of the gas power plant. Yeah, I like the way that that looks. So the next thing I want to do is I want to jump in over here and I want to put in some commercial shopping down in this space here. I'd like to start by just kind of smoothing out the, the area here. But I should make the access come in from this side over here or maybe even, even Cedar Street. In fact, maybe I can just make a big loop. What I can do is I can build in some shopping that's kind of in this space here that doesn't directly connect with all of this, you know, <laughs> dirty nastiness down in here uh, and just have some some nice little shops in here. I want to run out parallel with this. And again, I'm just doing some of these for placeholders. Something along like that and get rid of those intersections and then I'll knock out those those stoplights here in the in the future as well. But now that allows me to put in just kind of some little small shops kind of down around this area here. All right, so I'm going to go back to commercial zones. Uh, I'm going to go to European low density business and I want to paint these out individually. Just kind of do some small little, you know, maybe this is a two by two by three. And then can you do a three by three? Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. Uh, and I can put in a little park right up in this space here. You know, maybe it's a, um, I go to large parks. These are gonna be all too big, aren't they? Oh, that's that's not too bad, actually. That fits right into that space. Let's put a little park in there. And then what I can do is I need a parking lot. If I come down from here and just leave that in that space there and come back with a parking lot. Is it a medium one? I think the medium one will fit just fine. And it does. Yeah. And now I can connect this up with some sidewalk and we'll have full you know, we'll full, have full access in this space. So that's just a nice little shopping plaza back in there. You know, it's not going to be super fancy or high end just because of given its location, but it eats up some space and we're going to start, you know, kind of chewing into that commercial demand that we've got down there. And then I'll do the same thing back up in this area here. And we'll just grab a uh, two lane road. We'll come out of here. Just an odd shaped little space back in here. But one of the things I thought about doing too was putting in like a little low, uh, low rent tower kind of in this space here. So we'll go to residential zones and we'll go to low rent housing. I'll just drop a three by three in there. And I don't want them to be big. Um, I just kind of want them to be. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not sure what the, the smallest size. Can you do a two by two? Yeah, you can. So maybe that's what we'll do in here. We'll kind of create a, like a little, a little low rent park, if you will. You know, it just seems like a, a fitting place for there to be low rent housing, which would be kind of tucked in along these major roads and freeways. And then also you've got this heavier industrial space going on in here. So I drop that in there. In fact, I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to just have them all nestled around this little, this little um, loop, if you will. There, there we go. It's just a little tiny low rent neighborhood. And then I'll come back and grab some more commercial. We'll dot those in. Yeah, like so, I think that's probably good. And then uh, let me just take a look at this terrain here. I've got my terrain lines on. Would a parking lot fit in there? It, it'll fit in there. Well, maybe it won't. A smaller one sure would. Yeah, but will it look wonky with the terrain change, the elevation terrain change? Let's drop it in and see, what do you think? As it turns out, it's pretty flat. That's not too bad. So maybe I will keep that in there. And then let's eat up a little bit more of this space down in here with, um, you know, with some commercial. Maybe just a little bit more low rent housing. Maybe this is a, a series of, there's a two by three, there's a two by three, and maybe a three by three, a three by four. Yeah, that's going to get too tall. Well, we'll just see. We'll see how it, uh, that's really tall. We'll see how it goes, though. We'll, we'll see if we like it. And if we don't like it, we can always change it out. And then I also think that a basketball court might be kind of kind of cool to have down in here. Just a little uh, little getaway, if you will. So maybe I'll put in one there and one there. 
This is certainly not going to be a fancy part of town, again, with all the low rent district. And then, of course, you've got the industrial, heavy industrial, real close by here. Um, but it's a, it's a nice little space eater. And you can see we're going we're gonna to continue to chip away at the demand for commercial in this space. I'll flank these up down here with some additional commercial. All right, so now let's come down into this space and finish out our oil industry. That's a, you know still a pretty good sized space there. We've got lots of resources. So I want to start by drawing a 90 degree road down off of here and just connecting, ah, just connect right straight down to this uh, this little alley road that we've got running along the power lines. Ooh, I gotta be careful. I don't want to cut down my power lines. There we go. And then from there, I want to take a couple more alley roads and just run those out, you know, kind of out. Let's just do this here for right now and maybe do the same thing over here for right now just to create some uh create some space here i want to tee that off and i think i'll even in fact bring that up on both sides here and then let's jump back into our specialized industry grab our oil and i want to grab a another just put in another oil section right in the middle here because you can see it's still pretty rich in oil There we go. Now we've got another oil industry building in there. We've still got lots of resource we can tap into. So let's go back over here to oil. There, now we've got all of our oil industry in there. That's tucked in there as nice and neat as industry can be, I guess, um, but it'll work. Now let's come back in here and um, let's take a sidewalk here. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah, it looks it looks as though if I just run this right straight across here, we've got some nice little industrial zones right there. And then let's do the same thing on this side. We'll just come straight across here. So if I just go two by three, two by three, and so forth, that should, yeah, see that, isn't that weird? There's like a busted zoning square there. I, I don't understand why, but that's okay. So two by three, oh. Oh, chemical plant. Chemicals are everything and more are made here every day. A little, uh, chemicals are everything and more are made here every day. Okay, well, you know, I mean, it's a little broken English, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we have a new signature building. That's great. The chemical plant. And uh, let's just jump in and see. Let's see, take a look at that. Chemical plant, chemical plant. Uh, oh, geez, that's a monster. It's huge. All right, well, we're not going to use that in this space. I don't know that that would be appropriate here. But all right, at least we know we've got that one in our bag of tricks for future uh, for future use. So let's just kind of continue to flesh this out. We'll do that. We'll just do small little buildings. And my intent is just have just to have little small industrial buildings, you know, just kind of making their way down around this uh, around the shop here. And, and, and ideally, I won't fill it up with many smokestacks. I just don't want it to be a highly pollutive part of town, although I, I may not ultimately get a say in that. Uh, it just kind of depends on how the game works. I think we can start filling in with some office, don't you? Like like smaller, maybe smaller offices on this side, uh, low density, of course. And then on this other side, this little Aspen Street, that's where we can drop in some, again, some small commercial with maybe a parking lot or two down along this side here. Maybe it's uh, one in there one in there and then i can fill it up with sidewalks kind of flanking those parking lots to give us access all throughout this industrial space here yeah something like that so you'll see commercial that makes its way along this main road aspen street here a little office kind of dotted in behind it just to act as a buffer and then a lot more industrial in this space i'll probably come in here with a t and and make off a little industrial park there. Okay, so that's pretty nice. And now I think we need to focus our attention on the other side of the freeway where we've got another large big space here we can put in some more industrial. Now the key to this space is gonna be densification. So you know, as you look at this uh, area that we had built out, oh boy, once upon a time, look at all those smokestacks. Uh, I, ideally, I don't want that to happen in this other space as well. I'm trying to keep the number of smokestacks down to a minimum in this part of the build, but we'll see what we get. Uh, I want to come in here and I'm going to actually, I'm going to start by deleting out this existing little area here where we've got office and residential. And the reason I want to do so is, you know, I'm looking at these high voltage power lines that are running through here. And I think what I'd like to do is create a little separation in those high voltage power lines from the rest of our build. I mean, it'd be great for us to come off of here perpendicular, if you will, to that tower and then draw some of these parallel lines down here. I'm gonna turn this off. Have it come down to, let's say here, and then I'll bring this back across to our fuel building. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to intersect it, but I want to create what would appear to be like a concrete, a bit of a concrete slash, um, uh, I don't know, natural barrier in this space to keep people out. 
I want to keep people from wandering out, if you will, near the power lines. And so I thought I'd make it really apparent that this is um, this is kind of a it's just kind of a keep out zone, if you will. And then now that I've got those sidewalks you know, put in here, there we go. We'll just finish that off. I can come back in and take and, and elevate maybe again 3.75 meters. All right, so now I can take this and just run this straight on out here in this direction and just kind of wall this in, if you will. Uh, and that way it just, you know, it's a massive power plant. You just don't want people wandering aimlessly out onto the, uh, the space. And, and then um, I can come back in here with, uh, let's bring this back down to ground level. We can just kind of box this up. Yeah, I could probably change up the tower configuration in there a little bit. Maybe I'll do that during the, the time lapse, but uh, just to kind kind of set this aside as a, uh, and I'll add I'll add some more of these sidewalks in here, by the way. I'll, I'll just I'll come in and really densify it, if you will, with, with, with concrete so that it has this obvious industrial concrete look as it threads its way out you know to the uh to the freeway but what that does what that accomplishes is it allows us now to really clearly define the space that we want for our little you know a little mini industrial build in here now our industrial space down in here ideally what i'd like to do is let's uh, come back in here and just work some terrain if we need to yeah this uh, slope terrain tool i'd like to have it connect down in here and uh we're just gonna we're gonna work our way into that uh and the reason is because this is a pretty good sized space here. I'd hate for it to get cul de sac in just off of this one road that feeds out into this one roundabout. So I'd like to have like an exit point come out into this space right along that freeway there. See if I've got this, if I got like a two lane road that's that sneaks right along this freeway, I think we're gonna be in better, you know, in better shape here. I'll turn off all my snaps. Let's just see if I can kind of come out here and make a you know blend a road that comes out like so. And then I can nicely attach that right back into this main road down here. That'll give this whole development access out to this road that could, you know, in theory, cut back across over to Hickory Heights. It could connect back in over here and make its way to the freeway. Uh, you could connect into, you know, Crystal Point as, as we start to build this out as well. So let's, um, let's just kind of continue to think about road access as we build this neighborhood out. Uh, I'm going to come out with this one just to continue this path. In fact, let's bring this out to about there. I can dive this one right back into here and then we can box this off as well. So I want to use an alley road to do that. Just come straight out here. And again, it's I'm trying to, to do the best that I can to work with some of the existing you know, infrastructure or, or buildings that we put in place. You can see these little tiny, these little tiny two by two buildings down in here. I like that look and feel with this little wood sitting back in here. And I think I'll replicate that on, on this side here. Now what I can do is I can dot in little two bys. And ideally, what these will do is they'll fill, whoops, didn't mean to do that. They'll fill in with these little tiny, I don't know, they almost look like, I don't want to say warehouse, but storage buildings. Like, you know, come down along here. Look at, you've got these little teeny tiny uh, buildings here. It looks like they've got lumber uh, and planks and timber all stocked up there. Eh, I could use that. I could use that in Manor Lords, actually. You know, one of these little, but anyhow. Uh, so they've got a whole variety of different little, uh, little shops and buildings in there. Let's come in with our, our little alley roads. I like the idea of, of creating a new grid. Maybe this comes off of over here. Ultimately, what I want it to do is just be small, uh, low density industrial feel. So maybe it's we start off with a little two by two commercial. Then we come in with a two by two office and then we come in two by two industrial. Uh, two by three, okay. And then back to a, an off a commercial. And we just kind of work our way through this space creating something similar uh, you know, to this configuration without making it too dense. I just don't want it to be super, super dense in this space. All right, so I've got a few windmills in there and I think that's gonna really kind of help with the look and the feel here. Let's connect this guy up. In fact, I could probably just move him so he hits this road here. It just fits in there. Okay, cool. So just it's it's four, and it's not going to crank out a lot of uh, it's not going to crank out a lot of energy in this space. But I think it just it lends itself well into this this low industrial kind of a vibe here. Now you know, yeah, you got the the folks up here in Hickory Heights that aren't going to be real happy with it. But I think those windmills are far enough away where it certainly isn't going to hit us with the noise pollution. And as we as we covered earlier, all of any of the pollutive elements are going to make their way out 
you know, as you can see off into the horizon over here in the in the distance. So I think we're going to be OK. Uh, and then the orientation of a lot of these homes are kind of facing towards downtown and the university. So I think it'll be I think it'll be really nice. All right. Well, this feels like a really good time for me to jump into a time lapse. I've got a lot that I need to finish up in this space. And, you know, I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to give this a, uh, you know, if you will, maybe it's a higher density, but not higher pollutive uh, type of a build with the industry buildings. Lots of little two by twos and two by threes and so forth, just to kind of fill out the space in here, just to complement that. I'll do the same down in here, but again, a little less dense, a little looser, if you will, uh, with fewer buildings tucked in back in there. I want to come in and I want to give this proper treatment here so it does look like a concrete you know, zone in here. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it exactly just yet, but but we'll figure that out. And, um, you know, I, otherwise, I think I think we feel pretty good. I'll come in here and do some detailing down in this little low rent area, if you will, of uh, of Hickory Heights. And, I, you know, I don't know. We might even we might even come into this space with some more of it. You know, I can I could take this road and thread it across and have it connect into there, drop in some more low rent housing in there. So I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of feeling my way along in this space. It was, it's a good little space for us to fill in our city. So anyhow, I'm rambling now at this point. So uh, why don't you all just sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse. Let's reconnect here afterwards and recap our sculpture.
All right, welcome back. And I give you the River Bottoms area featuring the Parrot Coast Energy Park. <laughs> yeah, this one was pretty a cool build, actually. I really like the way that this thing turned out. As you recall from the top of the episode, we had this kind of funky, vacant space that was sitting down here because we had uh, relocated our rail yards out of Crystal Point and moved those off to the edge of the map. And then we had this space down here at the base of Hickory Heights that I knew I was going to build out at some point with some oil. And we finally took care of that today without, I would think, without making it a huge eyesore for the residents of Hickory Heights. All right, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's just jump right on in. Now, we started down here with our oil industry, and you can see, yeah, we, we built this nice little curved road that follows along the river here. And I tried to thread those oil industry assets in, you know, just to kind of follow those natural sweeping curves there and I, and I think it turned out pretty nicely um actually it's you know it's i've seen uglier oil areas all you have to do is reference roughneck isle in in my first ever attempts to use oil industries and i like the way that this turned out a whole lot better you know we're getting a little better as the game goes on and we had a massive massive uh, demand for industry and commercial and i think we've addressed both of those so let's just jump back over into this space i want to start by just kind of touching on the low rent housing that we put in here that eh, low rent housing is is important you need to have affordable housing kind of scattered throughout the city and i added quite a bit of it in down here and i tried to keep those elevations low. I did have a couple buildings that, that popped out around, what is this, about 12, 13 stories, something like that. But by and large, I kept them kind of low because I didn't want to, you know, really encumber the sight lines for the folks coming out of, uh, of Hickory Heights there. I dropped in a lot of commercial, some parking lots down in there as well. But as you make your way down along here, you can see lots of little commercial buildings in here, some larger market stores over here on the left side and some little commercial shops down in here. And then kind of continued that theme right down along here. Uh, along this major road. I think this was called Cedar, Cedar Avenue. And we've got some more low-income housing in there, some shops in here, a little park. And the intent was that this was a transition space really from the elegant Hickory Heights down into this, this dingy, grimy area here that's going to become our industrial zone. And so I wanted to leave a little bit of space, a little bit of a green belt, really with some shrubs and bushes and trees and just kind of leave a buffer, if you will, between the industry area and our and where our residential starts to come into play. Now, diving back down into that residential space, you'll see here there are only a few smokestacks in here, and that's that's by design. We wanted to keep the smokestacks to a minimum. I do see a few more popping up than I would have liked. I might have to come back in here as the series progresses and play whack-a-mole and knock some of those down. And I do like these silos, these little storage silos in here, little warehouses. You know, I think of this area as kind of, you know, maybe filled with machine shops and stamping houses and, and laser engravers and glass cutters and, you know, just kind of a variety of different uh, different shops and businesses down here. But look at these little these little storage bins down here, too. I like this. You know, you, you're, we're pulling oil out of the ground, and I was envisioning that maybe some of these tankers here are just, are just oil tankers or petroleum tankers. And then you've got these little... Uh, they're almost like little Quonset huts down in here. Um, you know, again, maybe we've got uh, maybe we've got some oil equipment down there. It's just a gentle rise coming up here to this next row of them, and of course, you've got the elevation up to where you see the rail line and the and the freeway there. So, just that subtle change in elevation, I think, really set this little industrial basin apart. I think it turned out quite nicely. All right, let's jump across the highway. Oh, let's zoom back over here into our area uh, here. The really the next industrial space, and it, this space here was originally with Crystal Point. I extended that industrial space down into here and tried to clean it up again a little bit. You'll see not nearly as many smoke stacks in this year. Well, you could see if you didn't have these big windmills in the way. <laughs> There's not as many smoke stacks in this area. And speaking of those windmills, uh, you know, I decided to add some of those in. Those are the first windmills that we've put into Pangasus Bay. By and large, the, the terrain isn't really friendly to adding wind power in this map. I'd have to get these windmills up onto some higher elevations just to get some, some better energy output. But I, I really just wanted them there for aesthetics. So, and, and this little commercial, I should say, industrial space turned out nicely because you can see there's quite a bit of industry in there, but it's loosely packed. I didn't want it too densely packed so that it kind of overwhelmed the space and became a sea of concrete. Let's jump over here and take a look at our top five design element. Yeah, it's the it's the Parrot Coast Energy Park. And this is our massive gas burning power plant that's in this space. And it was, of course, appropriate to do so with all of the gas production that we've got. You know, the oil and gas production that we've got going on right across the highway there. And of course, also down here in Crystal Point, as you recall, when we built this area out, a lot of these assets down here are oil and gas producing. And, you know, I took that big gas power plant and I coupled it with the fuel plant and I put those side by side. And when you do so, it creates 
creates this big monstrous looking energy facility, which I think is going to be fantastic for powering the rest of Pangasus Bay. We've got an energy surplus, the likes of which you've never seen, and we're exporting a lot of energy out into you know other cities here on the, the, the continent of Grand Vanillica. But uh, it's, a, it's a really great piece down here along the river bottoms, tucked in by this freeway and so forth. I uh, love the way that turned out. I added a bunch of parking lots around the uh, around the perimeter of it because it just didn't feel like it had enough parking. We tucked in some fuel storage tanks in here too. That's one of the expansion pieces for the gas power plant, and now we've got our our you know fuel reserves up quite a bit, so we can we can take a lot of the gas into this area here. And then down in this space here, you can see I built a wall around the uh, the power towers in here and tried to lay down really as much concrete as looked appropriate with these power lines these massive power towers coming of course out of our power plant and then i built this wall to keep people from you know wandering into the power plant the factory and then just put some scrub brush down in here that that might be appropriate with patchy concrete and patchy you know patchy sur hard surfaces and then you can see those power towers connect into our main power grid which runs right along the uh, the rail line and the freeway off into the distance over there. So there you have it. There you have it. That is the Parrot Coast Energy Park. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode, but sit tight. You're not going to want to miss the cinematics at the end. Now, just as a reminder, we are a growing channel. And so if you saw something that you liked today, be sure to leave us a comment down below. We sure do love to hear from you. Or if you just want to throw down your favorite emoji, do that too. The, uh, the engagement really helps with the algorithm to distribute our content to a wider audience than we've ever had before. Now, if you're also looking to throw some additional support behind the channel so that we can bring you even more content, just like our new Manor Lord series, we now have Patreon uh, pages where you can explore the four different levels of membership options, each with their own unique perks. Thank you so much for those of you who have already signed up. Your generosity is much appreciated. Now, also, while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. Okay, well, with all that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.